presentation, you said that the NIM was a surprise, the NIM growth was a surprise. I'm just curious to understand where this is coming from. Um, is this your personal loan book uh, adding to the margins? Is it largely that? And the other part of that question <coughs> is also that uh, there is th there is going to be some amount of uh, deposit uh, rate increases still. Right? Uh, going ahead, you still have to raise deposit rates. Uh, how soon will this uh, growth sort of normalize, according to you? So, uh, why again uh, it has surprised us is. Uh, because I think uh, in terms of the pressure for rate of deposit growth, I think it has eased a little bit. If you go to see announcements of banks in terms of deposit rate increases, I think they're not as many as you saw a couple of quarters back. The other part is if you also look at the stance of the central bank, that also seems to indicate that we might be somewhere near the peak of uh, the uh, cycle. Third, uh, apart from uh, the, the, the uh, pricing of deposit advances, there are other levers which are there, which you cannot predict, again, because they depend upon the macro economy. Uh, for instance, in our case, uh, the fact is uh, that uh, corporate loans, where there was a challenge in terms of pricing, now we are able to get much better pricing power. Uh, also, we are able to grow the corporate loans much faster. The growth was about 6%, I think, last year. Now, this year, it's about 13%. Uh, third, in terms of the out Facing of the international book, visibly the domestic book. Uh, that is something which is likely to dissipate. The international limb today is about 2%. The domestic limb is about 3.6% in the, in the last quarter. So if proportion wise, if the proportion of growth coming from international comes down, the overall entries margins ought to increase. Fourth is the point you made in terms of the uh, unsecured personal loans, which is contributing again very significantly in terms of margins now. So this year, the growth in uh, unsecured personal loans was, I think, of the order of 15,000 crores, there or thereabouts. So 15,000 crores of unsecured personal loans will probably uh, give you a net interest income, which might be equivalent to maybe 50,000 crores of uh, home loans. So it's a very significant benefit that we are deriving from that. Uh, and this is because the proportion is going up. Uh, and this proportion is likely to keep on increasing over the next few years. Fifth. It is on account of the fact that 60% of the book is priced at, uh, uh, M sorry, 60% of the book is priced in one-year MCLR. Right? Now, one-year MCLR, you get the benefit of that for a full 12 months after the last rate increase. Right? So that is again something which is likely to play out as we go ahead. So we believe that there are some uh, levers which are there, but again, the fact is that the 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 major benefit that was to come from the lag effect is gone. And so, which is why what our guidance was, we have been pleasantly surprised, but we believe that going ahead, margins growth will now moderate. The only reason why we remain optimistic is that our full year net interest margin is 3.3 odd. The exiting net interest margin for the quarter is 3.5. So we believe that <coughs> even if there's some moderation, we should be able to protect this 3.3 exit margin that we have. The other question I had was with regard to your <coughs> NBFC credit uh, and that shown uh, some amount of growth as well as far as the corporate book is concerned. Uh, is you given the breakup of what is AAA and what is AA and all of that, and great. But I just want to understand still if, if this push to end. See, uh, it's NDFC as a segment has the intermediary business in terms of reaching out to those customers where we are not there yet. And uh, this is one way, uh, but we are quite conscious of the fact that what is the percentage you need to keep that in our book. So in that way, we do have the risk matrix therein. Uh, it can grow definitely, but uh, again, on the overall portfolio, we need to be quite uh, balanced in that way. If you look at the last year growth, this is the outstanding growth. The growth has been balanced. Yes, earlier the percentage is slightly higher, but in terms of other sectors of the uh, industry, the growth has been fairly stable. So uh, it would continue, but not to the extent where you think that it would be slightly outpacing any other growth in any other segment. So I think as Chansab said, if you look at the detailed presentation, you will find that the percentage of NBFC loans to the overall portfolio is exactly the same at 30.7% off. So the stance remains that this is an important business. You want to do that. But we have not dependent upon this particular segment for growth. So we want to make sure that it remains 
a moderate calibrated approach to NBFC lending. Uh, is, you, you might say the base case, right? So we have grown our loans by 19%, not raised capital, but nevertheless the CT ratio has gone up by one percentage point. So the corollary is that even if you were to grow by 18-90%, we can actually generate the approvals internally to fund that. Next year, I think the market consensus is that probably growth will be nearer 12-30% early teens. We would want again to make sure that we grow a percentage point or two faster than that. So that takes us to about 30 14 percent range, which we can very clearly fund ourselves to our groups. Okay, another question I wanted to ask about your exposure in Go First, which uh, uh, ever since the company has filed for insolvency, uh, I want to know that uh, have you already made provision for that? How are you guiding for that? So I think my, my apologies, I should actually have, I had promised myself I'll address the question right at the beginning so we don't have questions that but I forgot that so uh, so our stance always has been that we are proactive in taking any provisioning which is required which is why you find credit costs has come down because we again identify issues at once and make sure we take provisions now normally we do not comment on any uh, specific account in this case we will make an exception because the company has made a filing and therefore again there are figures which are public knowledge so they have again uh, indicated, uh, the company has indicated that they have exposure to BOB over 1300 crores. This does not count of exposure which is get by the government. And of this exposure, about a thousand crores is collateralized by way of tangible collateral security and by way of corporate guarantees, right? And we have in this quarter gone ahead and made a provision of 500 crores for this account which means any potential downside has been put fully taken into account and we are completely protected as far as this account is concerned. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, your strategy, whether it's on the asset side or on the liability side, is a function of market conditions. Uh, so we were able, one is of course, that we try to make sure that you calibrate the bulk deposit to what the market conditions are. So two years back, we were surplus in terms of liquidity, so we quickly paid down our bulk deposit. So the growth you now see is pretty much a replenishment of the bulk deposit figure that might have been there about a couple years back. That's one. Uh, number two, uh, as, as a strategy, we have tried to make sure that the current elevated interest rate regime does not compromise the future profitability of the bank. Mm -hmm. Now, how you can do it is through two ways. One is you make sure that the term deposit growth is targeted relatively at the short end so that should there be a correction the bank is not hooked into a high interest rate regime so our flagship scheme in terms of retail term deposits is 399 days which you might see again on the posters now that means that within one year you can reprice those deposits similarly bulk deposits by definition actually have tenure up to one year so, and you are able to get it at rates which are pretty much similar to retail deposit rates so bulk deposits have been again a matter of conscious strategy because the maturity profile of these deposits suits us and the cost is also something that works well for us which is why you find the margin where they are. So is it as part Again actually for us uh, the uh, home loan of course is the core of the retail franchise. That's mm -hmm. uh, 70% of all retail loans and uh, unless you grow these uh, quickly you cannot grow overall. And this was the Achilles heel for us. Uh, a year back we were growing home loans at 12-13% and therefore that that put a ceiling to our growth in retail loans. Now that home loans are growing at 19%, you can actually have a retail organic growth at 27%. So that's strategy because that's core for us. In terms of retail personal loans, this was an outcome of the technological advances that we have been able to make as a bank over the last few years. Uh, the fact that you actually have Bob World and you can uh, reach out to customers without again they coming to your branches meant that you can actually reach out to a far bigger body of customers, that's A. Secondly, again, uh, the bank had uh, invested in data lake quite a few years back. Now we have been able to leverage that data lake to again analyze a custom base and make offers to customers in terms while making sure that although they are unsecured, the, the credit risk is something which is well contained. Uh, I think somewhere in the presentation we have also given the delinquencies in our portfolio uh, home loan NPAs are 1.5% as far as I recall from that slide mm -hmm. and in the case of unsecured personal loans around 0.89% or something. Right? So it means that you are able to have good margins, you are able to have as you said very correctly a favorable ALM profile 
and you also again are having good growth there. Okay. Last question, uh, sir. I think we won't really have too much exposure to fintechs again uh, at, at all, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but we do believe that fintechs are very important partners for us in, in terms of growth. And whatever challenges we have seen, first in the NBFC sector and then the fintech sector, it means we have reached a modus vendi where again both partners, the banks and the fintechs, know that the best option for them is to work together. So for us, actually, in terms of a lot that we have been able to do, uh, it is because of collaboration with fintech. Uh, Bob World became possible because of collaboration with fintech. Today, if you are able to have state through processing in MSME loans or in retail loans, it is because we collaborate with fintechs again to get various data points. So we see it as a very collaborative, cooperative relationship which works well both for the fintechs and for us. The sectors are diversified in terms of, if you look at uh, the slides that were given, in terms of the industry growth, it is fairly balanced. Uh, sectors like road, some of the power sector, even chemicals is doing well. There are multiple sectors where the demand is coming. Let me again, when we see the projection for next year, there is a huge in terms of the underrun, uh, actually these are all term loans given, sanction, the disbursement would happen in phases. So with that, the kind of growth uh, outlook that we are doing for the next financial year, that is quite achievable. There is demand all along, uh, may not be to the extent, but then by slightly a lower projection we have given because now we are at an elevated base, right? And that can slightly, uh, keeping a same growth would be a challenge. So that is what a slightly a marginal lower growth we have forecasted for the next financial year and current financial year. Okay. So my second question. So right now, uh, the process is on. Uh, we have actually uh, uh, issued an uh, um, uh, expression of interest and uh, called for some uh, interested uh, investors who are interested in this. So we have got a great, uh, good participation. We have got a good interest from the market. Uh, so the process for the uh, diligence, etc., is going on, the legal diligence and the financial diligence. So it will take approximately a um, month and a half to two months or so, and that is when we want to conclude the process. So by one month, two months, you are Two months or so, the diligence part will get concluded, and then we'll have uh, the final uh, investor who could, uh, who could be taken on board. Okay. Uh, so the last... See, uh, as far as Bustro, we do have quite a, a lot of Bustro open now. Uh, but these are again on a bilateral basis, so... Uh, as thing goes in terms of those transactions, uh, in case opportunity arrives, then we will let you know at that stage. So, Nanital also, I think uh, the same process has been uh, adopted as uh, I just mentioned for uh, the um, uh, freight cards uh, company. So, there also, I think uh, we have got interest. The diligence part is going on right now. So, another two months or so of the diligence, and then we will have some answers to. Uh, to as to who is the final investor. Uh, sir, one more. So, uh, actually, uh, we will have to wait for the final guidelines uh, from the Reserve Bank to come. But what we can say is that given, uh, so I, I think we, I, at the outside I mentioned that on a stable basis, 1% uh, credit cost is what we should act with, normally assume for a bank. My sense is that with given where credit costs are and given where the trend is, we should be able to absorb any ECL provisions within a normalized credit cost, right? And which means that the trajectory of improvement we have seen in the bank's profit that should not get impacted by the production of ECL norm because the RPA has also said that it will be implemented over a period of time. But I think we'll have to wait for the exact norms to come to have more definitive answers. Now a CFO answer the question. Effectively, the plan to raise about 2,000 crores through bonds in, in this financial year. Other is on the uh, we have received the DRH uh, the DRHP approval from SEBI uh, in March, uh, and post the DRHP approval, uh, of course, now uh, the final uh, market. Uh, of course, it depends on the market conditions. We are uh, organization-wise, we are ready, but again, depending on the market conditions, we'll. Uh, select a suitable time. We have a year from the approval, uh, from the SEVI approval. So within this year, we'll decide, uh, depending on the market. Coming to the, I think the composition is likely to remain uh, as it is. Uh, we have been uh, very clear that uh, we might uh, we value the risk diversification that the international book brings to the bank. 
so there were a large proportion of the growth that we have seen in fashion book that has come from global companies, not Indian companies, because then the diversification benefit is is lost. Uh, the the second thing is that uh, in terms of uh, credit cost, I think this model has worked very well. As I mentioned uh, in the beginning, uh, credit costs on the international book are negligible. So if you were to look at it in terms of net terms, we today have a net interest margin of 2%. Uh, the operating cost in that portfolio is sub 20%. So which means they are left with about 1.6%. And on that credit cost is very minor, maybe 25 basis points. So we actually have a return on assets which is as good or better than the domestic book. So it remains very important uh, for us as we go forward. But nevertheless, the, there's improvement in the domestic uh, the, uh, the economy, in the possibilities which are there. We believe that in today's market, we can possibly generate as good or superior returns. So therefore, again, we would want to make sure that the share of international is moderated, but the composition will work, will remain the same because it seems to have stood the test of time. But I again request uh, uh, Dalit, uh, who is actually not only our executive director who is in charge of international banking, but he also was fundamental to the improvement we have seen. So he was in New York branch, which probably has contributed to 75% of the growth that we have seen. So we request him first comments. So uh, continuing from where uh, Andy has left, is that, uh, you know, because of our wide geographical uh, presence, uh, we leverage the opportunities, uh, uh, you know, available uh, across various geographies. And that's how uh, we are able to generate a higher data, what we were not able to earlier. And uh, going forward also, the strategy will remain the same. Whenever uh, we get the opportunity to spread our margins, we will tap those uh, opportunities. Just one additional point of the composition of uh, portfolio, it remains the same, but the geographical composition has changed. So we are emphasizing very significantly on gift city as a major locus for our international business. Even as we speak today, after New York, Dubai and London, gift cities are fourth largest international geography today. We expect that within this year it will become the third largest outstripping London. So it, that's a great opportunity because it gives us tremendous advantages. Uh, one, uh, when it comes to our domestic clients who take dollar loans, you are, you are nearer to them, right? Uh, two, you are able to actually uh, recycle the talent which has come back from international postings. You can post them to the gift city, it works uh, very well for us. Uh, third, again, it, it, even in terms of other banks, all of them are making gift city again as a very important part of their business. So there is almost a critical mass which has developed. So quite apart from tax efficiency, I think gift city is going to be an important focus for us as we go forward. How much is the point? <coughs> uh, just again, uh, to again see if Tansa wants to again contribute to that. No, that's fairly articulated, sir. Actually, this year as a framework uh, needs to evolve over a period of time, right? And as a bank, uh, the time you consider my GNP at a much lower level and net NPA much lower. My restructured book as a book also, it's quite low. Uh, the stage two in terms of SMA2 book also quite low. So as a bank, we're quite prepared to have that framework, and but then we'll get a lot of clarity in the moment as the real framework chips in. So I think international has two components, right? One is uh, international as in international clients, which means global companies are going to with India. So most of that gets funded out of New York. So that is one major focus of international business. And then there's international as in Indian companies who are taking dollar loans. Now it is very advantageous to conduct that business from gift city. So I would believe that is how the future is likely to evolve with these two pivots really accounting for a major proportion of the wholesale business for us. Uh, yeah, maybe if you have it ready or when you have So, so largely, fixed loans, are, fixed loans are a very small proportion of our book. It's about 6-7% in, in quantum. Otherwise, it is largely floating. There was one bit about term loans that we gave. Uh, it's not necessarily that would be able fully in the next year. Yeah. But the pipeline is quite strong. Yeah. How big is it? Big will not articulate in that way, but then I can say that the growth of let's say 11 to 13 percent that we are talking about on the corporate, uh, half of it can come out of that on run also. There is such a large pipeline with us. Secondly, the capacity utilization on the working capital, uh, there is scope for like drawal therein. So considering the overall scenario in terms of my pipeline cases and the growth that we look for in terms of new to bank customer, uh, a growth of 11 to 13 percent can be 
the kind of a uh, that outlook that we are carrying for this financial year. And can you throw some light on NAR? Yeah, NACL, uh, uh, in 22-23, uh, there is a no account from Bank of Baga. And uh, in uh, coming year, we have five, uh, four or five account in pipeline. But uh, process is yet uh, is on. So we, we cannot uh, you know, uh, give any figure for that. 